if you want to get some extra credit points, you can create like a booklet featuring your logo and your designs, like a little style guide booklet. So let's see, here is InDesign. I have a document here. If you have the Creative Cloud, you have InDesign. Now, if you want to do extra credit and you don't have the Creative Cloud, you can try to do it with Figma to do something similar. So here in InDesign, I go to new, hold on, I clicked on the wrong. You go to new and just create a document. You get your same options here. So for a, like, a, like a brochure type booklet, you could take like a eight and a half by 11 document. So I will go in here and say eight and a half by 11. And this will convert it because you're already set to, you're set to pikas, which are, there's six pikas in an inch and there's 12 points in a pika. So it's converting this to pikas. And I did that too fast. There's a couple of things I wanted to do. Besides the measurements here, you have the number of pages. So if it's a book, we're just gonna fold it in half, but we can also add columns. So we can say four columns and then the gutter is the space in between and then it gives it margins and then let's make it landscape. So this will set up like a basic kind of foldable page that you can fold in on itself. You can add your, like a center point for where the fold's going to be. And then that's down here in this pages panel. So in addition to layers, you have page and then I have the front and then I want to duplicate that. So I just drag it onto the little plus symbol and then I have the back. So this section here would be the front, you fold it, that's the back and then this is the inside. And so in InDesign, if you use your type tool, you can drag out and start to create text boxes and you can use a, like some sort of grid type structure as well. Um, under view, you have what's called a baseline grid. So the baseline grid is the typical grid that defines where your text is. It's the baseline where all the text is set. And so you can define this baseline. And so when you create your text, you use that as your guide for where the text is going to go. And when you zoom out in InDesign, there's a term. If you zoom out far enough, the text kind of disappears. It becomes just like a line, a dark line. They call that Greeking, where you just kind of figure out where text is without having text in there. And then in InDesign, you can, there's a couple different modes to see what you're doing. And here under view options, you can turn off your, there's this little view options. You can turn off your baseline grid, but you have like a normal mode and then you have a preview mode and preview is showing you what the printed final document would look like. And sometimes every so often you go into this preview mode, you can hit shift W and it goes into like this presentation type mode and toggle back and forth. And I will usually toggle between preview mode and this display in normal mode. So normal is where you do most of your designing in. And then when you create your text boxes and there is overflow, so I'm gonna fill this with placeholder text. It has the same ability to add placeholder text. So fill with placeholder text, same as Illustrator does. And then when you click on, see Illustrator wasn't doing this. I don't know why. So if I go here and I can control click on that little box, I get this cursor and in the cursor is more text. And then you drag that somewhere else on your baseline grid. And that's how you can continue the text. So you can control click and drag that out. And then you're using your grid. You're using your, the, in the middle is your gutter. So you want to start using uh, all of this to help guide you. So you can create like a brand book. And as I scale up my type, everything kind of moves down. You can, I'll hide the baseline grid, but you can grab like an edge of one of your boxes, scale that in, your text moves down, and then you can adjust everything. But the text should all line up. So if you do have that baseline grid, that's where you're making sure that that text is all lining up together. And then even here. So it's, it's using a grid, just like we're talking about in Illustrator to help define the layout. That baseline grid, you can adjust that. So you can go to edit, preferences, grids, and let's see. And then here you have your baseline grid. So there's a starting point, which is usually based on your margin. And then you say every 12 points. So let's say I change this to 14. I'm gonna change it to 14 points. It's going to increase the spacing of that grid. And what you generally do is figure out a point size combined with letting. So letting is the space in between each line. And you determine the best combination that works on that grid. There's also, so there's this baseline option here um, and you can say custom baseline grid, or you can actually say, okay, let's match it. Let's say 14. I'll give it a different color. So now that text box has its own baseline grid. 
you see that? It's hard to see. If I turn off the main baseline grid, it goes away actually. But is that how you have green lines there? So I established a baseline grid just for the text box. So you could have different, sometimes you have text that's smaller. So you want a smaller baseline grid for that text. But what you start to figure out is text size and letting. So if my baseline grid is set to 14, maybe my text size is 12. And then you try to use similar increments. So your letting can be 14. So let's see. So I'll select my text and here you have all your typographic controls right on top. So right here is your letting. Maybe my letting set to 28. And then maybe, um, okay, I set my letting to 28. So what you can already see is now I'm following that baseline grid exactly. My text is big at 20. If I say like, maybe I match the text to the grid itself. So I say 14, and then I can maybe adjust my letting. And actually I'm gonna turn off the grid here. So here you can see I'm still following the grid at both. So I'm using 28, which is an ink. So whenever I, let's say I use 14, it's still following that baseline grid. So the baseline grid helps me just organize elements on the page. So if I do have an image, I would use that baseline grid as well. So maybe you have an image like here. So it's still following the structure that's defined by that baseline grid when I add something. So you can bring in your Illustrator artwork into this then once you export those PDFs using the asset management tool, you can bring that into InDesign and you can use a command D or a control D. So you hit command D and here I got a lot of random things here. So let's pretend that some of these images are, I got some PDFs. So here's some time off request sheets. So this, let's pretend these PDF files are your ads. So you hit control D and what happens is you have the actual image represented here and you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to flip through what you're going to add. And then I will usually align this to the baseline grid as I add these images. So I added one image there. These are PDF files, so you can bring in your PDF files. And then just using this grid to help align everything that I bring in. You know, you, know, you can grab these items here and you, under align, when you go to your options or object, let's see, where is stuff? Here you can go to align. So object and layout, it's in object and layout, you go to align. And there's these options here and you have some options to distribute the spacing. And let's see something here. So you have this little align to box. You have aligned the margins. So if I select this now, you don't have, um, I wish you had align to column, but you don't. So if I hit align to margins, I hit center, it takes it in the center, but you can drag it over and then you got a line representing that center point of your columns here. So I can drag these and now they're right in the center. Uh, when you add like an image too, sometimes you want to add a caption down below. So that's where the baseline grid comes in handy. So I would just drag the text box here and add my caption, but it'll probably be at a smaller point size. And now you can just align that to the baseline grid. Cause if that caption aligns with other things, it's going to make a better composition. Like here that you have your captions all aligning. So that's where that grid comes in handy. So everything has a grid. So the idea with design too, is every, there's always an underlying grid that's there. You just, if you don't utilize it, you're not going to really be aware of it, but everything has a grid. And most of the time you're designing to the grid itself. So that's what you think about as you create these compositions is what is the grid structure and how can you align things in that grid structure? So that's good. It's good to create these grids. So I, I always create grids in design. You have the baseline grid in illustrator. You can customize it with the divide, dividing the grid option under paths in your object menu. Make sure I got that right. Yeah. Here path divide split in the grid. So you can create these grids and I would recommend it as you work, turn them into guides and let that help you think about the structure and the composition of the images and typography that you have laid out in each of the individual ads. So any questions about that? Yeah. If you want to do a little book, you can go through these steps to create this little book. And when you print this, you can literally fold it in half and you almost have this little you know, brochure reference on the logo and the styles that you're using for the logo. But you want to include like the logo, the four ads, the color palette, the name of the fictitious business, 
maybe text describing each of the ads, what the ads are using captions, just like I have create like a nice detailed document that would help somebody who may be working for your company where this fictitious logo is being used. And then they have a good understanding of how to use the logo going forth. That's the real objective of some sort of style guide is to assure that when new designers or when new employees come up on board or when uh, the brand evolves, that people understand the proper way to uh, utilize all the assets to ensure consistency in the project. So that consistency is what helps establish the brand. And there's no branding guidelines and you're randomly just creating stuff, then that brand is probably going to not have as much um, bandwidth in terms of reaching an audience. It's just, there's too many different elements. People don't connect with it. But if you start to use these techniques, especially with grids and style guides and using assets repeatedly the same way, then you help develop the brand so much better. So these are important things to think about as you're designing. It's not random. It's really a really measured kind of approach to constructing the final layout. I have one question. I don't know if it's going to make much sense, but you know how you set up the pages where you can select the number of columns that you want and you have the center line, which would basically be where you fold your book once you print it out. Is there any setting in there that you could do like the first page as the cover or would you just use the first page number one as your cover and then put an image on the top if you wanted a nice cover with an image and some title or something yeah so this is actually set up with facing pages so if this was sent to a printer and you're printing out individual pages and it was going to be bound and not folded yeah this first page here would be your cover so technically this would be your cover and then uh, outer cover yeah okay i was thinking the inside cover okay and then these are the folds so you fold it open that's from page to page so this is using called facing pages so the idea behind facing pages is the pages that are set up to up are your spreads so you have these spreads then your cover is an individual page yeah and then the, your spreads are when you open those pages up that's what you see when you open up the book and then for the last one, if you wanted to put something on the inside of the last page. Yeah, it's the same thing. You could grab a page and there's a single page all by itself. Yeah. This is a layout for a printed type book where your margin is where the two pages meet. Now, if you're just creating a, dig a digital PDF, you don't really need facing pages. So you that's an option that you can turn off. But yeah, I think in it. I, when you view, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. When you're viewing, you, you were showing us how to toggle the preview and I forget what you call it, like when you're going to be previewing it. Is there anything in InDesign or Illustrator or anything for animating the page, like changing the page oh. or different types of paper, like antique paper or paper with a shredded, like a ripped outline edges or? Yeah, no, that's if you're creating like a digital type book, yeah. like a, and you want to have that effect, that's all done with programming, like JavaScript. Yeah, there's nothing in here that will create that illusion. Yeah, no. I've done something similar with JavaScript and CSS. Yeah, people do that with a, a page turn. Yes, so you have a little page turn, you click on it, and it's silly. You're not reading a real book, but uh, so yeah, it's, yeah. So some yeah e-readers will use that as a an option you can turn on to make it feel more real. Yeah. But again, it's, it'll never feel real because it's you're holding on iPad in your hand. That's weird. But yeah, no, that's not in here. So really InDesign, the main purpose of InDesign is for print-based projects. Something that you're going to take to the printing press, brochures, large form books, catalog, you know, posters even, but a lot of the posters are one pagers and will be done in, in Illustrator. But they are for, InDesign is for print-based. There is options to do interactive. So there, you'll notice interactive panels and toolbars like adding links, web links and stuff like that. But it's not used that often for that. What you can do is you can create PDFs that are interactive and use some of those things for interactive type PDF. But I don't know how many people use those things, but mostly in design is for print, like a print-based project.